Welcome to Mind Matters at Southeast Psych. I'm Dr. Craig Pullman, and my guest is Dr. Tracy Barcott, my colleague. Hello. And we're going to talk about social development, early childhood, ages mm -hmm. two and three. Yep. But to get us started, give us a little intro. Like, what happens before age two in terms of okay. social development? Well, um, babies are very social creatures, and so really from the moment that they're born, they are primed to be social animals. and Newborns actually recognize their mother's voice within hours of having been born. So that's a very social learning skill right away. So it's important to think of newborns as ready for learning. They're not, um, they're not just babies that can't do anything. They're not blank slates. They really come in with a lot of their own skills from the very beginning, and they build on those skills right away. So they're listening. They're watching people's facial expressions, paying attention to how they react to each other, and absorbing and learning all of that from day one. Um, so smiling is one of the very first active social things that a baby does, mm -hmm. and that can happen early, you know, four or five weeks old, or maybe a little bit later, mm -hmm. um, and then they're looking for that response that they get back from someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and then as they start to develop language, they play with that in a way to get reactions from other people. And so ideally, you're seeing them really use language in a social way, even before they're very good at it. So they're babbling at someone or you know, talking to get someone's attention if they're not getting enough of that person's mm -hmm. attention. They're interrupting. Those kinds of things are completely normal and good, healthy social indicators that they're interested in other people and they want those people to be paying attention to them. And, and a lot of nonverbal stuff, a lot of right. actions and right. gestures Eye contact and contact is very yeah. important, um, pointing, showing people what they want before they're able to talk about it, responding. If you talk to them and call their name, they should be, you know, sometimes they're going to be interested in what they're doing and they're not going to want to stop to look at you. But a lot of times they should kind of redirect their attention back to you to show that they're interested and that mm -hmm. they're a part of that social interaction. And that's all very appropriate to see early on with kids when they're mm -hmm. a year, year and a half old. They should be really directing a lot of their words to you and responding to what you say to them. So, so let's go up to that two to three year area. Mm -hmm. What are we seeing uh, in terms of social development there? The biggest thing I think is play and so you see kids playing from a very early age you know infants will be toying with their own reflexes and kind of trying to make things move around them and then as they get older they're stacking blocks and filling cups and all of that is play but as they get to be two or three their play really starts to look like what people think of when they think of play and so they'll be pretending um, which is you know very simple early on they might pretend like they're talking on a phone because they've seen mom or dad talking on a phone or they mm -hmm. pretend um, to be stirring something in a pot. So they're really going to be imitating what they see immediately in the world around them. So I guess we've got to be careful. Very careful, <laughs> what, because they're what, what mimes and mimics, and they will absolutely do what they see and hear other people doing, especially if it's impressive in some way. So mm -hmm. um, the more emphatic it is, the more likely they are to repeat it. But as they get a little more sophisticated, they can actually delay their play and pretend doing something that they saw you do several hours or even several days earlier. And that's a real hallmark of their cognitive development, but it's a social development too. At first they're going to play by themselves, but then as they get a little older into those two, three preschool years, they're going to want to play with other children and peers are going to become really important to them. You're going to see a big increase in the importance of peers at that time. Now how does that progress? I mean, there, talk about parallel play and mm -hmm. the cooperative play. What's the progression right. there? So parallel play comes first. When they start to be interested in other kids, they'll want to be physically close to other kids, but they're not going to really interact that much in their play. And that's normal at that time. So that's not something to be concerned about. So two little kids might be playing with blocks or cars right next to each other and not really look at each other or have their cars interact in any way, and that's normal. They're Just still aware of each other. Yeah. Right. They're, they're sort of playing together in the way that they can at that point. But as they get a little older, they might set up a scenario and you know play together in a cooperative way so that their cars are doing things together or crashing into each other or they decide to take turns racing or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, you know you see that real development where they're cooperating together, working together to create some kind of goal versus just playing next to each other and enjoying the presence of another person. Now what about conflict when you see that kind of cooperative play creep into so, you mm -hmm. know some disagreement? Mm -hmm. Well what what uh, how appropriate is that? If you see kids acting out something that they've seen, is that what you mean? Well, uh, say, I want, you, I want that red block. Mm -hmm. I don't want my red block. I'm going to take your red block. 
Well, that's also very normal, and it does certainly create conflict because kids don't like it when other kids take their toys. Um, but it's very normal not to ask and to just sort of grab and reach for what they want. Those are kind of expected moments, but also teaching moments when parents and caregivers can help them try to learn better social skills, which really is a process. That's not a natural, innate thing for kids to share well or to take turns or to ask please. But the more that's modeled for them by the people that they're around, if their parents and other caregivers use good manners and um, try to teach them in those moments without really reprimanding them too harshly because that is normal for them. That's the way that they can learn how to be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Great. This is really interesting. Thanks a lot sure. for this. And we have another conversation about language development. There's a lot of crossover between so social crossover. and language development. They really develop hand in hand. All right. Great. Thanks for being here. Sure. Appreciate Thanks. it. I'm Dr. Craig Pullman for Mind Matters of Southeast Psych. We're saving the world one toddler at a time.